clean energy, day and night in all seasons that could supply 20% of global electricity. Yes, it's possible we could do this with wave power. That's extracting energy from water waves. Wait, what? You've never heard of this? Neither did I until some weeks ago, so let's have a look. Wave power is different from both hydropower and tidal energy. It extracts energy from the constant motion of water, energy that ultimately comes from the rotation of Earth and temperature differences created by the Sun. According to the IPCC, the global potential is over 30,000 terawatt hours per year. That's nearly twice the electricity consumption of the entire world. This is the energy we could generate generate if we used all coastlines, so clearly not realistic, but it gives you a sense of the enormous potential. The US National Renewable Energy Laboratory has estimated that the American coastlines alone could deliver 1,400 terawatt hours of wave energy per year, more than a third of US electricity use. Wave energy has two big benefits over solar and wind. One is that the ocean always has waves, so it delivers 24-7 every day. Better still, since waves are driven by temperature differences in the northern latitudes, they are most energetic in winter when solar energy is low. The other benefit is that wave power is far more concentrated than solar or wind. One square meter of a solar panel in good sunlight yields about 200 watts. Offshore wind has a typical power density of around a few watts per square meter because they have to be spaced out quite a bit. But a similar area in a high energy wave field can deliver over 30 to 70 kilowatts. In reality, though, wave energy currently delivers basically nothing. This is because the technology is, despite its promise, not very well developed. It seems, however, that this is about to change. Earlier this year, the Swedish company EcoWave Power connected a small wave unit to the grid in Los Angeles, the first grid-connected wave energy system in the United States. At the same time, another Swedish company, Core Power Ocean, secured 40 million euros from the EU for a 10-megawatt wave power project at the coast of Portugal. The US government completed PacWave, its first grid-connected wave power Power test site in Oregon. More pilots are underway in Taiwan, South Korea and Ireland. There are several different wave power technologies. The simplest ones are point absorbers, which float on water. They move up and down with the waves and convert that motion into electricity. Ecowave power works like this, for example. Then there are attenuators, which are long-jointed structures that flex as waves pass along them. Overtopping devices collect water that runs in on top and then back out and drives the turbine on the way. The Danish company Wave Dragon works with that, and some work underwater. These are mounted on the seabed and swing back and forth with wave motion. This sounds great, so why doesn't it exist already? I don't know, but I can guess. It's because in the early 2000s, several wave power companies made headlines, but one after the other they went bankrupt. The British company Pelamis, for example, was founded in 1998. They built the first grid-connected wave farm of Portugal in 2008, which delivered 750 kilowatts. However, after a few months, it had to be towed back to shore due to technical problems. By the time it was repaired, a major investor had gone bankrupt and the units were never redeployed. The Australian company OceanLynx deployed a large device on the southern coast of Australia, which sank. The company went bankrupt soon afterwards. The Canadian company Finavera Renewables abandoned its project after prototype sank in a 2007 storm. The Scottish company Aquamarine Power, founded in 2005, simply couldn't get enough funding to convert its demo into a workable product. They went bankrupt in 2015. And just like that, dozens of startups burned through funding, then quietly disappeared. By the mid-2010s, wave energy was basically dead. The major difficulty they encountered was, in a nutshell, the sea is rough, and those devices simply didn't survive the harsh environment long enough to justify the investment. The new generation of companies have learned from this. Their machines are designed to survive. Some shut down in storms, some submerge, some put the sensitive parts on shore, 
much like I deal with social media comments. At least on paper, the new companies look promising. The other thing that's changed is that the interest in renewable energy has surged, so it's easier for startups to attract funding. Wave power won't replace solar or wind, but it can complement them. And at least to me, it looks like a promising technology for any country that has coastlines. If this works out, we'll just have to explain to our children why it took us some thousand years to notice that the ocean moves. And now something important I want to thank you. Over the past two years, more than 1,000 of you have joined me and Planet Wild in restoring our ecosystems. For those who don't know Planet Wild, they're basically doing crowdfunding for nature. Every month, their community funds conservation projects around the world. What sets them apart is that they document all their work in video reports on YouTube so we, the community, can see what we've achieved. And thanks to all you who joined, we've much increased our reach but to have a global impact, we still need more people. So if you haven't signed up yet, now's the time to join us. You can give whatever amount feels right to you. And if you're one of the next 100 people to sign up using my code Sabina212, you'll get your first month covered. Just scan this code or click on the link in the description. You can cancel any time after that. If you want to see Planet Wild in action, check out their videos. They're truly inspiring. My newest favorite is this one, Reviving Underground Forest in Tanzania. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.